All the news that's fit to print. That slogan appears on the front page of the New York Times and has appeared there since 1896. But you and I might rewrite it something like this. What they print will give you fits. Also known as the old gray lady, the Times ought to carry the more accurate moniker of the locked-in leftist lady. Nope, the New York Times curries no favor with conservatives. And that, of course, is its First Amendment right. Heck, when the token conservative among its columnists is David Brooks, who may be a token in some capacity, but certainly cannot be considered a conservative, you get an idea of just how hard left they are at the Times. In keeping with its leftist dogma of finding nothing exceptional about America, the Times has finally done it. Yes, it's finally printed the headline that captures the sentiment of all those leftists who feel that this nation will finally earn its just desserts. The headline that encapsulates the notion that Uncle Sam should cry uncle and slink into the mediocrity of socialism. The headline that depicts this once proud republic reduced to just another place on the map where the only extra we deserve is an extra dose of humble pie. Now, don't say you haven't been warned, and at the risk of losing your supper, keep your eyes on the screen if you dare. Oh, sure, your eyes may focus first on the delightful picture of the delightful Mary Tyler Moore as the delightful Laura Petrie in the delightful Dick Van Dyke show, but the words above the photo are most certainly not delightful, at least to any right-thinking American. America's best days may be behind it. That headline screams at you and me from the Internet edition of the Times, and what is more of a sign of the Times is the economic scene column written by Eduardo Porter. In the 1,287 words of Porter's lengthy column, two words that do not appear are President Obama. Amazing! We're now just one day shy of one year from inaugurating a new president, and the Times keeps intact its record of finding no link between the current chief executive and America's decline. Now, the Times has long been famous for its legendary crossword puzzles, but perhaps it ought to add another feature, one for connecting the dots. It would not be geared for younger readers. No, instead, it should be required for the writers, the reporters, columnists, and editors still in the employ of the New York Times. Allow me to connect the dots for those blissfully unaware journalists. Open borders and an unwillingness to enforce immigration law, inviting terror, balkanization, and anarchy. Socialized medicine that reduces the quality of health care while raising costs and taxes. Runaway spending that is wrecking any hope of restoring the American dream, much less fiscal sanity for our grandkids and for future generations. Those are just three of the factors hastening our decline, and I didn't even mention the appeasement of what will soon be a nuclear Iran, nor the sustained assault of your Second Amendment rights. I mentioned earlier, of course, that the Times is entitled to its First Amendment rights. I just wish it could open its collective eyes to what is really threatening us. At least, that's the way I see it. How do you see it? We'd love to have your comments via social media. Send your comments to me at Newsmax TV slash comments. That'll do it. Stay brave, stay free, stay tuned.